okay, so now we've kind of shown some of the basics of how you create variables, how you save that data to a file, but you know, most of the times in R and most of the times in machine learning, we're gonna wanna work with big data files, right? And these files will have lots of sub aspects to them. And as we mentioned in the intro, right, they'll have instances and they'll have features and they'll have target features and, and different aspects, right? Um, so these kind of standard just like sequences and repetitions, those aren't very good for those kind of things. But what is good is something called a data frame. And data frame is one of the most common uh, things that you manipulate in R. Now, it's very rare that you create a data frame directly from scratch, though you could do it. But since that's rare, I'm gonna kind of skip over that. Instead, I'm gonna show you how to work with a data frame once you have one. Um, and luckily, R actually, because it is kind of the statistical toolkit, comes built in with a bunch of useful um, data sets already that are in the form of data frames, right? Um, and so to get access to them, we're gonna say require stats. And stats is one of the, the, the packages, right, that comes with R. So we're gonna type require stats, and we require stats, and then we're gonna, specifically, stats has a bunch of data frames already installed within it, and one of them is called the attitude data frame, right? Um, and you can kind of select it, right? And as you can see over here, it just added a data frame to our global variable, our global environment, and it's 30 observations of seven variables. And you might be curious what the attitude data set is. And if you type in attitude into the help bar, it'll give you the fact that it's the Chatterjee Price Attitude Data. And it's the survey of clerical employees of a large financial organization. The data are aggregated from the questionnaires and approximately 35 employees for each of the 30 different departments. The numbers give the percent proportion of favorable responses to seven questions in each department. So this is kind of a survey of, a, of employee satisfaction, right? Um, and the Y variable is the, the rating that um, the, um, that the, that the overall employees get, right? And the different kind of comments, how well do they handle complaint complaints? Um, do they allow special privileges? Do they have an opportunity to learn, right? What does the job do for them, right? Um, and so this is an example of how these different attributes might result in their overall rating, right? So let's look at some of this raw data, right? You can see that there's some examples there, but if we wanna see it in more detail, we can click this little button over here and it'll pull it up in a nice spreadsheet format for us to look at, right? Um, and so in this case, we see the actual data, right? Um, yeah, and so, um, but I do wanna make a small comment here. So we've started kind of moving from, you know, the top half of this file was kind of just playing around with stuff. The bottom half is actually um, going to start doing some modeling and looking at data frames. So one important thing to learn to do early in all or in any programming language is to document your code. So I'm gonna add a comment here, and you do that by starting a line with a, the hash symbol, pound symbol, whatever you wanna call it, right? And I'm gonna put data frames right here, right? I can go back up to the top if I want, and I can put in hash uh, variables, right? And this is just to kind of demarcate what's going on in the code, right? Now, once we have that data frame, right, we can see that there's all this aspects to it, right? It's a two-dimensional array. So how do we access that? Well, we can access it in a number of different ways. One way is that we can, for instance, just directly treat it like a big matrix, and so we can put, for instance, data one comma one, and you'll see that gives us this value, the rating here, right? Um, we can also treat it like a matrix and look at rows of the data. So if we type one comma, we get the first row of the data, right? Um, and if we type in comma one, we'll get the first column of the data, which in this case is all the ratings, right? Um, and so, um, this is one way to access data. It kind of treats it like a matrix. If instead you want to treat it by, for instance, the names, if you'll notice, the, the columns actually have names, we can do that as well. So we can say, for instance, I want to take all the ratings. So we use this thing called the dollar sign uh, accessor, and that just kind of says, in this data frame, I want this column, right? And we could instead go to the learning column, for instance, and get that result. Right? So this is just a different way we can access different aspects of it. Now, 
let's say that we want to know which of these different um, groups had the highest rating, right? So first of all, we can easily find the highest rating. We can do max data string rating, right? And that'll tell us that the max rating anyone um, anyone got or any department, I guess, because it's an average of departments, right? Got was a 85, right? But that doesn't tell us which row that is, right? So there's luckily there's a nice thing in R called which max, which I can type data string rating, and it says that it is the 29th row. And in fact, if I scroll down, you'll see that the 29th row has a rating of 85. And you could kind of start to put these things together, right? So let's say I want all the values, I want that entire instance of the data frame that has the max rating, right? So then I can say data, right? Which dot max data string rating, and then put that comma in to say I want all of the columns, right? And now I have the entire instance of the one that has the maximum rating. Right. I'll put this into my code so that um, it's obvious when later on. So there's which, right? I'll put this one in. I'm having trouble copying and pasting, but put this in here so you can see it. And I'll upload this file uh, to the Moodle so that you can see it at a later date. Mm -hmm. Just so. Playing around with all this stuff. Right? Okay. Um, and let me just get the examples of accessing the columns in the um, instances so you see that right, and data i'll just type this one in because i know okay all right so those are the different ways you can play around and uh, manipulate data frames and the next section we're going to talk about how we can start to model this data and then plot it right so already we've gotten into data we've got a data we can play around with you know, we're close to getting to the group project already, right? Um, we just need to know what the AI and machine learning tools are that will help us solve it. Okay.